to know each other, so I'm just going to let you know where I'm coming from, all right? I'm a New Yorker. Yeah, you can tell because I can curse and still sound like a fucking lady. <laughs> I, I was also a New York City bartender for like seven years. It's easy to tell because I can curse and I can still sound like a fucking lady. <laughs> Fuck you if you don't believe it, okay? That's where we're at. I'm, I'm short, I'm loud, I'm demanding, I'm Sandra Bullock in all of her movies. <laughs> There's this thing with uh, New York City bartenders that I like. It's this reputation we have. Uh, for some reason, people seem to think that we can like, oh, that I could drink you under the table. Right? Or that uh, I was able to have sex with a different person every night. <laughs> I, I want to be clear. It's absolutely true. It's really true, you guys. My 20s, my 20s were a ding dang fantastic, let me tell you. It was a good time. I really leaned into that as much as I could. You know? I want to be clear. I, uh, I enjoy having sex with people, right? Um, but I like romance. I, I'm a human. I like romance. I like rom coms. Right? Right? I enjoy uh, the greatest rom-com ever, clearly, Dirty Dancing. <laughs> it's, it's the smorgasbord of rom-coms. Yeah, gay or straight, there's a little bit of something for everyone. <laughs> you know, I was watching uh, Dirty Dancing with my roommate the other day, and she was just staring at Jennifer Grey and talking about how beautiful she is and how she wants to be protected. And I was just staring at Patrick Swayze's ass, the entire time. It's beautiful. See, all the men laugh at that, every woman's like, yeah. <laughs> like they can't talk because everyone gets so excited about it. At some point when we were watching this movie, it went from like, I love this movie, to literally, these were these sounds. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You're a dirty girl. <laughs> yeah, you carry that watermelon. You carry that watermelon. Right? Like, like we had just opened up Red Tube and we're looking at the new blowjob video. You know? like, dirty dancing, emotional porn. I'm absolutely positive of it, you know? But I wanna here's the thing. Me and Patrick Swayze, we go like way back. Way, way back. And Patrick and I go back to when I was three years old. Yeah. I was in a, I used to dance a lot, yeah, and I would go from like 3 to 15, I was always at the dance studio for like two or three days a week, okay? And when you would go in, you know, if you had to like do a little tinkle, you'd walk into the bathroom, you'd take off your little leotard, you'd sit down to pee, and right there was a picture of Patrick Swayze. <laughs> in all his dancing 90s glory, he had the leotard on and he was making this pose, my favorite, of a dancer. <laughs> Just like this, like leaning halfway down, right? So for like 10 years, I would walk in, I'd take out my little leotard, I'd sit down to pee, Patrick Swayze and I would have a little conversation. That was 10 years, okay? I hit maybe 12 or 13, and here's what happens. I walk into the bathroom, I take out my little leotard, I sit down in the bathroom, I look at Patrick Swayze, and here's what happens. Oh. I'm going to show it to you again. <laughs> oh! Because here's what my vagina was doing. Ready? Good morning! Like, he just woke up. Like, Patrick Swayze is such a good-looking man that I went through the, the wall and suddenly I was sexually active. Like, I'm sure. Okay? Patrick Swayze, the reason I got to fuck everyone in my 20s, okay? We have a very special connection. Basically, I'm saying, here's my ideal man. Looks of Patrick Swayze. Attitude of Patrick Swayze. <laughs> gumption of Steve Gutenberg. <laughs> <laughs> Let me explain that one. <laughs> Just go, you're going to see that it's true. You're going to feel it. Okay? Because during this time, there was also this wonderful, perfect movie that came out in 1992. It's the pinnacle of cinematic accomplishment. <laughs> I'm, of course, talking about It Takes Two, starring Steve Gutenberg and Kirstie Allen. <laughs> yeah. It's a Mary-Kate and Ashley Olsen movie. It's perfect, okay? It's unbelievably perfect. This movie, here's the plot, okay? You've got two girls, okay? They're separated. One grows up, you know, no sister, child of a rich widower played by Steve Gutenberg. The other one grows up in an orphanage. Okay? She's lonely. She's missing something. The orphanage is headed by Kirstie Alley. The two girls meet in camp and they decide that those two have to get married so we can all be a family. <laughs> now here's what you're asking yourself. <laughs> Are they long lost twins separated at birth and they bring their family together? No, don't be stupid. 
<laughs> They're identical strangers. <laughs> but in that movie, there is the definition of true love, and it is my North Star. It guides me to this day. And it's when Mary Kate, because I can tell the difference, it's when Mary Kate walks up to Kirstie Alley and she says, well, what kind of love are you looking for? And Kirstie Alley says, I'm looking for that can't eat, can't sleep, bottom of the ninth World Series kind of love. <coughs> it's fucking perfect, you guys. Like, that's what needs to be in our lives. You know, that's unbelievable. And see, okay, this lovely day down here, she's looking at me and she's telling me I'm wrong. And I, I know where you're going with this. I do. I know where you're going with this. Because you're going to tell me that the perfect definition of true love is from Grey's Anatomy when <laughs> Meredith the McDreamy are right post you know, surgery and she looks at him and she does that kind of shaky head thing where she goes, Derek, I love you. And I love you in that can't eat, can't sleep, pretend to like your taste to music kind of love. Right? I get that. That's bullshit. Shonda Rhimes stole that shit, okay? <laughs> she stole it from It Takes Two, and it's perfect, and that's what guides me to this day. <laughs> um, I told that story a couple weeks ago. It's totally true. And this girl walks up to me, and she says, Hey, Steve Gutenberg's my cousin. <laughs> I was like, well, this is the most fucking L.A. conversation. <laughs> and I went, oh, well, that's great. And she goes, yeah, I texted him during uh, that bit, and I, I told him about it, and he said, well, you, this, you sound so sweet, and you sound so kind. And I was like, well, uh, oh, great, that's great. I'm really glad I could give him that joy. And she, <laughs> and she goes, yeah, it's just, it's so sad because he already got married. <laughs> so I kind of like the idea that the cousin checked in and was like, that marriage still sticking because I got a girl for you? But um, she says to me, yeah, he got married. He just married a 33-year-old woman he met on the beach in New York. <laughs> I'm from New York. <laughs> <laughs> I could have married Steve Gutenberg, and I missed my fucking chance, you guys. I missed it. It's gone forever. <laughs> Come on, feel bad for me. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Shut up, you guys. I still got posters of Patrick Swayze. Thank you so much. <laughs>